Have you ever pondered what happened when the Knights of Christendom, on a mission to liberate the Holy Land, ended up sacking a Christian city instead? This is the intriguing tale of the Fourth Crusade, a tale of grandeur and betrayal, of noble intentions that went awry. In the twilight of the 12th century, Pope Innocent III, the spiritual beacon of Christendom, issued a call to arms. The year was 1198. The purpose? To free the sacred city of Jerusalem from the clutches of the Muslim Empire. Knights and nobles from across Europe were lured by promises of glory and salvation. They pledged their swords, their lives, their honour to this divine cause. It was a call that resonated with the promise of eternal glory, a call that stirred the hearts of the devout. The stage was set for a grand mission, but the course of history had other plans. So how did a pious journey turn into a tragic farce, you may ask? Well, let's delve into the intricacies of the Crusaders' plan. Their ambition was to reach the Holy Land, but not by the usual land route. Instead, they planned to sail through the Mediterranean and land in Egypt. This strategy was not without merit. Egypt was the center of Muslim power at the time, and its capture would have been a significant blow to their adversaries. But as we know, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. The Crusaders' grand strategy was no exception. To execute their plan, they needed ships and lots of them. Enter the Venetians, the preeminent maritime power of the time. They struck a deal with the Crusaders. A fleet for passage to Egypt, the price tag, an exorbitant 85,000 silver marks, a sum that would make even a king's purse feel light. The year was 1202. The Crusaders arrived in Venice, their hearts filled with religious fervor, their minds set on their holy mission. But when it came time to pay the piper, they found themselves woefully short. The coffers were empty. They had grossly underestimated the cost of their venture and overestimated their ability to pay. The Venetians, ever the shrewd businessmen, proposed a solution. They offered to suspend the payment in exchange for a little detour, a slight deviation from the planned route. The Crusaders, now heavily indebted, found themselves in a predicament that would divert their path drastically. And so the stage was set for one of history's greatest heists, a theft so audacious it would forever tarnish the name of the Crusades. But that's a story for another time. For now, let's pause and reflect on the irony of it all. A holy mission, derailed by mundane matters of money, a noble quest turned into a desperate scramble for funds. Truly, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The Crusaders, now heavily indebted, found themselves in a predicament that would divert their path drastically. What could lead a group of Christian knights to attack and sack a city of their own faith? A question that has puzzled historians for centuries. The answer lies in the murky world of political intrigue and the ambitions of a deposed prince. The Fourth Crusade, initially intended to retake Jerusalem from Muslim control, took a disastrous detour when it was diverted to Constantinople, the heart of the Byzantine Empire and a stronghold of the Christian faith. The diversion was not a random act of opportunism, but rather a calculated move orchestrated by the exiled Byzantine prince, Alexius Angelus. Alexius, seeking to regain his throne, promised the Crusaders a wealth of rewards, including financial compensation and military support for their intended journey to Jerusalem. However, fulfilling these promises hinged on Alexius reclaiming his throne, a task he believed the Crusaders could aid him in. Despite the misgivings of many, the Crusaders, burdened by debt and swayed by the promise of riches, agreed to this detour. Constantinople, a city known for its impenetrable walls and formidable defences, fell under siege in the summer of 1204. What followed was an act of treachery that would forever stain the pages of history. The Crusaders, instead of aiding their fellow Christians, turned their swords against them. The city was mercilessly sacked, its treasures plundered, and its citizens subjected to horrific atrocities. The very knights who had taken up the cross to defend the faith became its greatest violators. Alexius, having regained his throne with the aid of the Crusaders, was unable to fulfill his promises. His reign was short-lived and marked by civil unrest, and the promised aid to the Holy Land never materialized. The Crusaders, feeling cheated, decided to divide the spoils of the Byzantine Empire amongst themselves, establishing a Latin Empire that lasted for nearly six decades. The city of the world's desire fell not to the infidel, but to fellow Christians, 
a shocking twist in the tale of the Fourth Crusade. What happens when the dust settles after an unexpected storm? In the wake of the Fourth Crusade, the city of Constantinople lay in ruins, a shadow of its former glory. The Crusaders had not only failed to reach their initial goal of the Holy Land, but had also left a path of destruction in their wake. The aftermath was as chaotic as the Crusade itself. The sack of Constantinople in April of 1204 marked the end of a vibrant, thriving city and the beginning of a new era. The Crusaders established the Latin Empire, a state that would control the city and the surrounding areas for the next six decades. This was not the triumph they'd envisioned. Instead, it was the start of a long and painful occupation. But the repercussions of the Fourth Crusade extended beyond the borders of the Latin Empire. The Byzantine Empire, a beacon of power and influence before the Crusade, was shattered. Its territories were fragmented, its wealth depleted, and its prestige diminished. The empire that had once been a formidable force in the Eastern Mediterranean was now struggling to survive. Furthermore, the Fourth Crusade deepened the rift between the Eastern and Western churches, a division that had been growing for centuries. The violent sack of Constantinople, a city held sacred by the Eastern Orthodox Church by Crusaders from the West, was a betrayal that would not be easily forgotten. This estrangement between the two branches of Christianity would persist for centuries, a haunting reminder of a crusade gone awry. The decline of Byzantine power also had significant geopolitical implications. The balance of power in the Eastern Mediterranean shifted. This created a power vacuum that the emerging Ottoman Empire would eventually fill, forever changing the course of history. The Fourth Crusade, a journey that began with a noble intent, ended up being a dark chapter in the annals of Christendom, leaving a legacy of betrayal and devastation. And so it is that history teaches us even the noblest of intentions can lead to the most tragic of outcomes. Please like and subscribe to the channel.